SpaceX Starship, world's biggest rocket, successfully blasted off from Texas on Thursday evening. However, it exploded during its first flight. The uncrewed rocket blew up four minutes after it blasted off from Starbase. Despite the failure, SpaceX and Elon Musk, the founder and CEO of the private space company, declared it a success. Further, experts called it an example of Musk's so-called successful failure formula. Musk wrote on Twitter, and I quote, Congrats SpaceX team on an exciting test launch of Starship. Learned a lot for the next test launch in a few months, unquote. NASA chief Bill Nelson also congratulated SpaceX, saying that every great achievement throughout history has demanded some level of calculated risk because with great risk comes great reward. Thousands of space enthusiasts witnessed uh, the launch of the most powerful rocket. Some travelled from different parts of the country to do so. Uh, I actually got a little bit teary-eyed. Uh, you know, this is, we, we were being told that this is the most powerful rocket to take off, and the minute it took off, you definitely felt it, you felt the power, you felt the noise. So, very pleased, very, very good, you know, experience to have been here. I was excited. I mean, I had of, uh, I've seen a lot of launches, but this one was special. I mean, I actually got a little shaky right before it launched. It's uh, quite incredible that it did as well as it did. I'm not sure what the outcome of the whole flight was, but uh, it was definitely incredible. A dramatic video captured the launch and the spectacular aerial explosion of SpaceX's new Starship rocket. Minutes after it soared off, rather than seeing the fiery disintegration, experts said that the dramatic loss of the rocket ship would help accelerate development of the vehicle. Yeah, Kate, right now it looks like we saw the start of the flip, but obviously we're seeing from the ground camera. This is a classical SpaceX successful failure. So one of the things that is a hallmark of SpaceX uh, during my time there and makes it very different from traditional aerospace or what we did at NASA was this embracing failure when the consequences of failure are low. In fact, when beginning to design something new, uh, it's, it, it, you look for opportunities to create uh, uh, chances to fail, even spectacularly sometimes, uh, early on and often, so that you can learn as fast as you possibly can. So how was this liftoff supposed to happen and what was the intended mission? The plan for the integrated test flight was for the super heavy booster to separate from Starship after the launch. Starship, which has six engines of its own, was to continue to an altitude of nearly 241 kilometers, completing a near circle of the Earth before splashing down in the Pacific Ocean about 90 minutes after the launch. What actually happened? After less than four minutes into the flight, its bottom half, the super heavy, the super heavy booster as it was called, failed to separate from the top part and Starship spacecraft began spinning out of control, leading to an explosion in the air. SpaceX stated that the vehicle experienced multiple engines out during the flight test, lost altitude and began to tumble. Starship and the booster reached a peak of altitude of around 39 kilometers and a top speed of around 2,150 kilometers per hour. However, the failure is seen as a great lesson. SpaceX foresees eventually putting a Starship into orbit and then refueling it with another Starship so it can continue on a journey to Mars and beyond. If Starship works, the rocket system will be used to take people, according to Musk, the eventual objective is to establish bases on the moon and Mars and put humans on the path to being a multi-planet civilization. I think Elon's goal for getting humans to Mars with Starship, or at least sending an uncrewed Starship to Mars, was something like 2026 initially. That's probably very unrealistic. But with the pace at which SpaceX has managed to accomplish everything that they've done in the last decade or even in the last five years, it wouldn't surprise me if we had humans on Mars with Starship in the next 
decade, maybe 10 to 15 years max. So the Starship, the most powerful rocket ever built, exploded during its first flight on Thursday. Despite the explosion, Elon Musk congratulated his SpaceX team on an exciting test. The next generation spacecraft is designed to send astronauts to the moon, Mars and beyond. It is standard procedure to destroy a wavered rocket to prevent damage to people or property below. The Starship spacecraft and super heavy rocket are collectively referred to as Starship, as you can see here in this picture. Now, Super Heavy is the first stage or booster of the Starship launch system, which is this white uh, portion of the rocket that you can see. That's called the Super Heavy, the booster system. Starship is the fully reusable spacecraft and the second stage, which is here on the black, on the top half of uh, this spacecraft. So that is called Starship. This is a fully reusable spacecraft and second stage of the Starship system. The U.S. space agency NASA has picked Starship to ferry astronauts to the moon in late 2025 for the first time since the Apollo program ended in 1972. So now let's first talk about the Starship vehicle, the top, the top portion of the spacecraft that we were talking about. This vehicle offers an integrated payload section. It is capable of carrying crew and cargo to Earth's orbit, the moon, Mars and beyond. Starship is also capable of point-to-point -point transport on Earth, enabling travel to anywhere in the world in one hour or less. Let's uh, also talk about uh, what sets height is, the specs. Height is around 164 feet. That's only the black portion of the aircraft we saw. The uh, the fully reusable spacecraft that's called Starship. Its height is 164 feet. Uh, the propellant capacity is 1,200 tons, while the payload capacity is around 100 to 150 tons. So that's the payload capacity, 100 to 150 tons. That's uh, quite significant, as the scientists have been pointing out. Uh, let's uh, look at uh, the other aspects of this. Elon Musk has built this starship as crucial to SpaceX interplanetary exploration goals as well as its more near-term launch business. Now, let's talk about the Super Heavy, the first, uh, the first portion, uh, the first stage of that rocket. That's the white portion here down below. The Super Heavy is powered by 33 Raptor engines using subcooled liquid methane and liquid oxygen. Those Raptors are at the bottom of this, uh, which are uh, 20 Raptors are on an outer circle and 13 Raptors in the middle of that outer circle. That's how the Raptor engines are positioned. The booster is fully reusable and will re-enter Earth's atmosphere to land back at the launch site. It is 226 feet high with a propellant capacity of 3,400 tons. Remember, no astronauts were aboard for the crewless flight this time and the rocket was flown almost entirely over water. So what exactly went wrong yesterday? Let's talk about that. The plan for the integrated test flight was for the super heavy booster that was meant to separate from the Starship so that the lower portion, the stage one, the super heavy was supposed to separate from the top portion that's called the Starship. That was the mission. After launch, uh, the, that was supposed to separate and splash down in the Gulf of Mexico. What happened? They failed to separate. However, uh, and that the, and the, the booster rocket and the Starship spacecraft began spinning out of control, exploding four minutes into the test flight. The Starship and the booster reached a peak altitude of 39 kilometers and a top speed of over 2,000 kilometers per hour. So that's exactly what happened, the mission uh, and what exactly happened in that test flight when the explosion Happen. All right, joining us to discuss on what went wrong and the lesson from it is Dr. Amitabha Ghosh, a space scientist on NASA Mars Robo Mission Control. He's joining us from Washington, D.C. Thanks very much, sir, for speaking with Vion. 
let me begin with asking you for better understanding. Could you take us through the findings and perhaps the engineering shortfalls that may have led to this explosion? It's a very complicated, high-powered vehicle and you have to get just everything right. It cannot be like 95%, right? If it's 5% wrong, it's going to be a failure. So what you saw today was um, there was a great apprehension that the um, vehicle will not even um, um, clear the towers and it will burn the launch site because of its heat. So I think the first thing that they did is they cleared the launch tower. Then uh, there were, um, it, it also cleared the area where the maximum stress is on, on the launch vehicle. Uh, that zone also they cleared. Then um, they were able to attain an altitude of 39 kilometers. We're well, not quite into space, but still not really in, in the ground either. So where they failed is the two um, um, attachments, the Starship and the booster, they, they're supposed to uh, detach that something went wrong there. Right, of course, these are expected hiccups in a development and launch plan at this scale. But sir, uh, that being said, how do you see this launch and how does the so-called successful failure formula, how does that impact further study and preparations for a future launch? Now that they have a point of what's happening, they will go and fix it and then they will come back and try to launch it again. And maybe... Uh, even further on down the timeline, there may be another sort of hiccup. Another hiccup this time was there are 44 Raptor engines. I think three did not light up. 44 or 33 Raptor engines and three did not light up. So they'll also perhaps look into why it didn't light up. So, of course, this is iteration. This is one of the iterations. The next iteration will be better and then it will keep getting better. And at some point, it will get the... Um, human rated um, reliability after multiple flights. So it's, it's surely in a trajectory, very hard to say whether, whether there's a 100% probability of success, but they are certainly in a very good trajectory to getting there. Sir, let's also talk about the intended objectives of the Starship. You know, what can you tell us about that? And what makes it different from the existing technology that we have right now? If somehow the cost of launch and um, and uh, cost of cost of access to space goes down drastically, maybe by two orders of magnitude, what will happen? There's going to be a huge increase in demand. So whatever budgets the space agencies like NASA had to go to Mars, they could use that same budget to go to Uranus, which is much much further away into the solar system. So if you want to go to Mars with a certain amount of um, payload, so for example, a rover which is 300 kg, now you can do a 3000 kg rover or you can do something even more. So, um, so if this really creates this platform, if this is successful, to do many types of missions and you will hear many, many projects which people talk about, the lunar base and the human mission to Mars, then NASA has plans in, in its um, a longer term plan to go to Uranus and then um, going to Jupiter mission. So everything becomes much cheaper. So if this technology is shown to work in let's say two years, three years, it will change the trajectory of um, human exploration of space. It will uh, change the tra trajectory of human exploration. Everything will become cheaper. Those are interesting details there, Dr. Ghosh. Uh, my final question to you, you know, Elon Musk has said, of course, that they've learned a lot. SpaceX foresees eventually putting a starship into orbit and then refueling it with another starship so it can continue on a journey to Mars and beyond. You know, how do you assess the prospect of that? And how do you see this fit into the larger context of space exploration? Going to Mars is one of the things that we can do with Starship. There are many other things, including which Elon Musk has touted, you could go from point to point on Earth 
um, in maybe 30, 40 minutes. So, so there are many possible applications of this technology. About the Mars thing, he has a very unique architecture here um, to go to Mars. So what, what they say in space, the biggest cost is to get out of gravity. So he has this idea that you could um, um, refuel in space and that will give you a much greater uh, economy of going to another planet. And it's a very interesting idea. The, I, the, what, what he has in mind has been demonstrated. So um, I think um, his plan is rational, but, his other, but the other parts of his plan, uh, like um, growing plants on Mars and making Mars, the Mars atmosphere more dense, those are, I think, much more ambitious. All right, Dr. Amit Abhal Ghosh, a space scientist on NASA Mars Rover Mission Control. Thanks very much for joining us with your perspective.